This is the Planetary Society's first Senate event. We did a lot of these in the House, but uh, this is, represents part of our expansion into raising awareness about the excitement and potential of planetary science to congressional staff, to people who work in the Senate, and also just to the public who are coming in and members who are joining us today. Bill and I here, we're in the back room, the ante room. And I'm here with Michael and Kevin, and we're going to talk about Mars and Europa and get these staffers excited about funding missions to the planets so that we can, dare I say it, change the worlds. We're still 15 minutes early, and the room is almost full. I'm really happy with that already, and I'm hoping we'll get people standing in the back. For a long time, people just assumed that there was life out in the solar system beyond Earth. And then we actually started going out to the solar system, and it was not a hospitable place. Mars didn't have an atmosphere, it was ice cold, and you had these barren deserts. We began to understand how rare and how precious life actually is, and I think along with that, our respect for it increased. And it became the idea that maybe Mars doesn't have life now, but maybe in the past, it was a habitable place where life could have taken hold. For the first time in our history, we no longer have to just speculate, but we can actually go and begin to answer these questions directly. Everyone, please welcome Congressman John Culberson. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. To be there to help lift NASA up, to help scientific uh, research and exploration of the universe on our own planet, to make sure the United States stays at the cutting edge, and to, to have that opportunity is just something I've dreamed about for many, many years, because I'm convinced that when we discover life in another world, it will be discovered in the oceans of Europa. Uh, I want to be there to be a part of that, to help lay that, uh, make that happen, and to give NASA the freedom. Above all, I'm going to focus on giving uh, uh, Jim, everyone there at NASA, the freedom they need to get the politics out of the way so that the scientists, the engineers, the geniuses at JPL and NASA and Johnson and the Space Flight Centers can do what they do best. There are things that make Mars very interesting as a planet to study, but that's not why we're really interested. This planet is a terrestrial planet like Earth, and in the first billion years, it was more like Earth than it is today. Because it was more Earth-like early on, it also has the potential for life to have started there at the same time that it started on our planet. The success of Curiosity landing on the planet has set the stage of where we are confident that we can get a metric ton on the surface of Mars to accomplish whatever science we want to do. And it's also set the stage for the 2020 rover which is using the Curiosity architecture, the Mars Science Laboratory architecture, but it's gonna use different instruments, and it's gonna look for the signs of life, and it's gonna cache samples. What was going on in the history of Mars? A history of how the planet changed, and that's recorded in the layers of the rocks. And we see a place that had water in its past. Yes, barely, Mars could have supported life in its past. For the past few centuries, if not millennia, we have primarily been explorers of new lands, searching for new continents, new countries, and new rocks. The oceans just got in the way. I think we are about to embark on a new age of ocean exploration. It's an age of exploration that will bring us to the deepest, uncharted regions of our own ocean. And it will also bring us to new oceans beyond Earth. It's an age of exploration that will be motivated by the desire to better understand biology and life on Earth, and to potentially discover life on distant worlds. We are all connected by the same tree of life. Is there another way to get the business of life done? To answer that question, we need to go to places that may harbor living life. Europa ranks on the top of my list. Thank you so much. I really 
Let me start by saying I very much appreciate you all taking the time to come here. NASA is absolutely the best brand the United States has. Everywhere you go, people respect NASA. But if we are to discover life on another world, it will not be an individual. It will be a society who thinks this is just a worthy thing to do. If we can send spacecraft to these logical destinations in the solar system and find evidence of life for what is 9% of 0.4% of the federal budget, you could be part of utterly changing the course of human history. That is a bargain, everybody. <laughs> and I remind you all that there is a lot of space in space. The scale of these missions is, is extraordinary in time, but it is also extraordinary in budget. The budget is relatively low. And in exchange for that, we get the internet. We get cell phones that tell you which side of the street you're standing on, using information from outer space. In other words, space exploration has these extraordinary benefits to our society. And where the new and exciting stuff is happening in space is in planetary exploration, in deep space exploration. So together, everybody, the staffers and congressmen and senators here, we are at a, at a time in history where we can change the world. What do we want to pass on to future generations? That we just stayed here on Earth, that we didn't look out and deep into space to find out where we come from and are we alone? No, we want to pass on this joy, this excitement. I claim it's deep within us. It is in us to look farther and deeper, to over the next hill, to beyond the horizon. That's where we make discoveries, and that's how I claim you all, working together, can change the world. Thank you all very much. We'll take questions. Thank you.